What I've learned from going from a six-figure career to minimum wage is that you have to do what makes you happy. So as long as I can earn enough money to continue to bake pizza and to give it away to people who need it, I'll be happier than I could have ever dreamed of. If you were to measure happiness and money, I think I'm probably the wealthiest pizza baker in the entire world. My name is Miriam Weiskin. I live in Brooklyn, New York, and I'm a professional pizziolo, which is terminology for pizza baker, baking pies for donation out of my apartment. The difference between good and bad pizza are the quality of the ingredients and the person baking. There's so much that goes into it that people do not know, especially if you're making small batch pies like I am. That pizza that somebody's gonna order starts being made three days before they pick it up. So the kind of styles of pizza that I specialize in, New York style, wood-fired, and lately Sicilian. The round pizzas sell out about a week to two weeks in advance. The Sicilian sells out about a month in advance. Beautiful, through and throughout. Cheese, sauce, and crust, everything you need in a simple pizza. So when COVID hit, I had a choice to make. It was either sulk and fear dying alone in my apartment or take advantage of this opportunity and do something I love. And the one thing I could do aside from running um, before daybreak was to bake pizza. So I started baking pizza for people in my building who lost their jobs, the elderly families that needed to feed everyone. By baking pizza for them, that helped give me hope. And it just blossomed into this beautiful thing. Keys, come down. Here's your pizza. Thank you. The way that people pay for pizza, it's by donation only. There's a suggested amount that they can donate for. If they don't have a job, it's free. If they're a first responder, it's free. If they're just sad and having a really tough time in life, it's free. These are for you. Lovely. COVID and quarantine separated everyone and, and made us kind of, you know, while we were in our apartment, we still had a sense of community. And to see her every day, like, Spreading the pizza joy has, has really been pretty cool to see and special. And then I'd have people say to me, why don't you charge more? Why are you charging 10 or $12 for a pizza? And I go, we all could use a break right now. I see all around us in New York, people are leaving, all these businesses are folding. And I think there's opportunity there to bring something new and something that's of comfort to people. I mean, what happened after the Great Depression? What was the food that was born after that? What was accessible? What was affordable to these families that had no money? and this pizza. Just about making life easier for people. This is a time when we all have to come together as a community. I'll see you tomorrow. Well, this is Monday morning prep. Uh, I had to do all this before I go to Pauly G's to do his prep for the day. Generally, this whole process takes me an hour and a half. I use a blend of two flours, kind of secretive. One of them's Caputo, the other one we won't talk about. So you can see here as I'm mixing this, see the little bubbles that are forming? That's the yeast starting to activate. That's good, it's alive. You see they're popping. Good morning, good morning, good morning. But this is my life every morning. I was an art director, a freelance art director, constantly hustling to gain new clients. I had a nice Rolodex of current clients. About eight years ago, I met Scott Wiener through Scott's Pizza Tours. I decided to take on doing pizza tours with him, and that's where I really discovered that my whole life I've loved pizza. And when he met me, he's like, you know what good pizza is, but you don't know that much about it. So he took me under his wings, and over those next eight years, that's how I learned everything there is about pizza. I decided about a year ago to say goodbye to the an art director and say hello to baking in some of my favorite pizzerias just to learn the craft and the skill that would be required to do it. So I went to a couple different pizzerias that I loved in New York and the first person to say to me when I asked, hey, can I come learn how to bake in your pizzeria was Polly G. After a couple shifts of baking pizza for a restaurant full of people, I fell in love with it. And then when COVID hit, everything changed in the best and the worst kind of way. So I am taking the dough out. This has been fermenting for, it's on its third day. I'm gonna ball it up, put it on a tray, and it's gonna proof until I bake it at five o'clock. When I hand mix it, I can feel the life in it. That's the beauty when you're hand mixing and you can feel the dough and you're connecting with it. I can feel that it's gonna be a good dough already. This recipe took me about three months to land on to get it just right because I'm using a Breville Pizziola, which is the pizza oven. It's like a household oven. I can make wood-fired pizza with it. I can make good old tavern-style pizza with it. 
Originally from Dayton, Ohio, which is home to tavern-style pizza. The situation when I was born is that my mom was in labor for so long that my dad and a doctor ordered pizza. And so the running joke was is that when I popped into the world and took my very first breath of air, I was born into the world of pizza. A typical American Jewish family, we only ate dinner once a week together, and that was Chinese on Sunday nights. We grew up in the woods, and pizza to us was either a pizza bagel or it was Little Caesars or Papa John's. I was a huge soccer player, um, very into athletics, not into cooking at all. Worked three jobs when I was in high school in order to save up for college. When I first moved to New York, I didn't know a single person here. I'd never been here before. I moved here on a coin toss and 600 bucks in my pocket. I had great success as a creative director and art director. So it was tough to walk away and to pursue something with uncertainty. But life is short and you have to go after your dreams and do what makes you happy. These are gonna become round pies tonight. So these are all the New York style and the quote unquote wood fired Italian inspired rounds. This afternoon they'll be beautiful. It's a wrap. Most people take the subway, ride a bike, drive, I run to work as part of my relaxation process. I like, look forward to taking a break from my own pop-up, working on the team at Poly G's. I run traditionally between 50 and 80 miles a week. Because I'm an ultra runner, running is what gives me solace and keeps me at peace. And I found that same kind of feeling with pizza baking. This smells so good. If I could make a perfume of just the smell, I mean, first of all, I'd be weird, but second of all, who's to say what weird is now? This is yoga for me. You can't beat starting a Monday morning off rolling out dough balls like this. When I started working here, you know, I asked Paulie, I was like, I want to learn how to bake pizza. And he's like, when can you start? And after the first night, I, I got to bake a pizza in the oven, and the rest is kind of history. And then when COVID hit, we all unfortunately lost our jobs. When we were finally able to reopen, um, you know, he reached out and he's like, I need a baker. And I was like, I'd love to bake, but you know, at that point, I was too scared to work in a restaurant. I was like, what else can I do for you? And he's like, day prep. And I'm like, oh, brilliant. Because that's something I actually need to learn if I'm gonna ever make it into the world of becoming a pizzeria owner someday, which I hope to do. Well, my shift generally goes 10 until I'm done, which is about, uh, Sometimes it's 2.30, sometimes it's 3 o'clock. It depends how much I have to do that day. So after this, I'll run home, and then I have to get ready for my own pop-up. So tonight, I'm completely sold out. The difference between baking in an apartment versus Poly G's, uh, it's a much smaller space, so I can do everything a lot faster. But I don't have anyone to help me with cleanup, and that's the only thing that's a big bummer. <laughs> Then at three o'clock in the afternoon is when I begin my prep, and then I begin baking at four o'clock. Pickups generally go between five and seven every 15 minutes. The pickups range anywhere from six to 10 people per night. One of the Michael Jordan pies, the Sicilian. I only do two Sicilian pies per night. So I make my own sauce. I use a blend of two different tomatoes. I use Alta Cucina from Stanislaw, and I combine it with 7-Eleven, which is a crushed tomato, because the crushed and the whole tomato have a very different flavor profile. Chicago bowls were red top, and then the pie itself measured total dimensions of 23 inches. It would take 23 hours to make, and I was like, you know what? Let me do an ode to Michael Jordan. So I decided to call it the Baby Butter MJ. The Baby Butter MJ, with this weird pan, I wanted to create a just phenomenal tasting pizza, and I thought about the things I love. So what I did is I greased this tiny baby pan with butter after doing a second proof, par bake it, and then I encase it in New York State white sharp cheddar cheese. And then I use whole milk cheese, I use my own sauce. And when I bake this pie and pull it out, it's basically a New York style Sicilian with a Detroit edge. There's a little bit of Ohio sprinkled in there, but it was a unique Sicilian pizza. It wasn't super heavy, but it wasn't super light. Every Michael Jordan pie, gets a vintage Valentine from 1990 of Michael Jordan. They're all cheesy, but uh, I bought these on eBay. So I put a personal message in the back just to say something special. So today we're gonna be kind of cheesy. Fly high eating this MJ butter baby. Everyone who gets an MJ gets one of these cards. Like there's a, the one woman who gets it every Wednesday. She's a drawer full of Michael Jordan cards. <laughs> So for my Hawaiian pizza, I put a little bit of a Jewish twist on it. I use salami with pickled jalapeno pineapple. I mean, New Yorkers, to begin with, hate pineapple. But every single person I have given this to has absolutely loved this pizza. 
So there are two people getting a mystery pie tonight and they order a mystery pie. I give them whatever I want. So two people are getting the brisket. So I took my mother's brisket recipe and I decided to put it on a pizza. Very high. <laughs> They're yeah, always good. So no matter what you get, you know it's gonna be delicious. Getting these pies out on time is critical. Once I launch in the oven, I just adjust it, make it rounder. You're not supposed to stick your hand in there like that, but I do. So you have to let the pie cool down for a second before you put it in a box because the heat creates so much moisture that it'll get soggy. These pizza boxes I'm very specific about because every person that gets one, they get a message. So on the inside of every box, every pizza is for my mom. Inside every box, I put for mom at heart. And the reason why is that my mom passed away from COVID not too long ago. She'd always been like a huge inspiration with pizza. One thing we always shared, God bless my mother. She used to peel all the cheese off of the pizza and leave the crust. <laughs> the only person in the world that I wish had been able to try my pizza is my mom. So she's here in spirit. I'm surrounded by pizzerias in this neighborhood, but I still felt that I needed to give back in some way. You know, my mother was a huge inspiration of what I'm doing. She was the kind of woman who would drive around on Rosh Hashanah and give away 200 bottles of honey to make sure that everyone she knew was sorrowful with Sweet New Year. And I kind of feel like I am my mother because I'm taking pizza and I'm helping to make life easier and brighter. I like to prep them all like this. And I order this box just because I love that I can potato someone that today's special is you. When people pick up the pizza, those who know me personally, and they know what the for mom is. I think that's part of the story. I think that's part of the reason people come back for more pizza is because it's not just about having a pizza that, you know, from what I've been told, tastes really good. <laughs> but it's the story that goes into it. Hey guys, <laughs> here's pizza for you guys. It was like a time when there was like no like rhythm to anything. So we would like write our pizza day on the calendar and it was like a thing that was like highlight of the week that we look forward to all the time. We've gotten it, I think, almost every week. She's yeah. really friendly. She always has a funny joke <laughs> about yeah. pizza. And also, we, she, like, nearly every time, she gives us some type of stick and like these. I would love to be able to open up what would be the second female-owned and operated pizzeria. Being a woman in pizza is smashing a glass ceiling and doing the impossible. Such a small percentage of women represent the pizza industry, like single digit percent. And a big problem in the industry is people aren't paid fairly. I want to be able to open a pizzeria that offers fair wages to people. Would I still do the pay it forward thing? 100%. That's a huge part of why I started doing this. And that's the principle I stand behind is no matter where I wind up to always continue to help people out that are in need. It took me 40 years to figure out this is where I belonged. And I just feel so at peace. I feel I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. There are moments where I definitely get frustrated and I drop a pizza or um, I oversell. But what keeps me going is that every night when people come by to pick up their pizza to see how happy it makes them. And at the end of the day, it is my special place when I start to bake pizza. I encourage you to live beyond the edge of your comfort zone. And yeah, we're gonna be scared of what's coming up, but we're all in it together. It's not, no, nobody's alone out there. For me, my grieving has been through running and baking pizza, so it's almost like every pie I bake is another beat of my mom's heart. You know, it's what's keeping me going and knowing that she's looking down and, and just so proud. <laughs>